So, Mr. Hewitt, uh, congratulations on the startup of uh, your new machine, and uh, and I'm glad to hear that it's it's uh, running well and uh, and producing a good quality product. And I'd like to hear a little bit more about how that product is being accepted in in the corrugating plants. Well, most of the product uh, to start went into our Norampak corrugating plants, uh, and uh, we so we had instant feedback and good feedback. Uh, we were able to uh, make. Uh, minor changes uh, based on that feedback and then uh, uh, once we were a little more confident and stable with our production we opened up into uh, uh, partners and to uh, open market mm -hmm. and all of the feedback so far I can tell you has been uh, has been just excellent on the uh, runability Very and good. the printability of the paper. Okay, so. so the market is is developing and uh, and where do you think it's going to head in the next few years? Well, I mean, obviously what we're trying to do is, is look for uh, a competitive advantage around a complete box characteristic uh, as well as uh, uh, lighter weights. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, it's, we have to develop the market, I guess. Uh, uh, we believe it's going to go similar to uh, Europe, uh, so grades are always going to be uh, moving down in weight. And uh, treating the, the board to make it stronger is uh, something that we, we uh, designed into the system and prepared to do. Now, in your investigation process, when you were selecting the technology that was appropriate for for your situation and your your quality, uh, tell me about how you evaluated various mills that you saw in Europe, and uh, what were you looking for at those mills? Well, I, I think first and foremost was um, proven technology, uh, but state of the art. So we didn't want to be the the first site to use the technology, but second or third was okay. Uh, second was uh, quality, uh, third was uh, focusing in on um, uh, efficiency and runability, so uh, obviously looking at the best way to design the paper machine to run efficiently. And I think, I think the last thing was that uh, the automation and control. We felt that uh, we wanted to be lean and we wanted a lot of automation and control to, uh, to help us make sure that we uh, make a consistent and stable product. Okay, now tell me about your, your maintenance arrangements uh, in the mill and you've hired uh, Valmet as, as a third, quali uh, third party uh, contractor and tell me how that works, how do they interface with the mill people and particularly the, the production teams, uh, uh, you know, what is the interpersonal relationships between them? It's, uh, it's very similar to, to, to any other mill uh, out there. I mean, the only difference is, uh, is uh, really who's paying, paying the people. But, I mean, the leader for, uh, for Valmet Maintenance uh, sits on my management team mm -hmm. for the mill. Uh, the, the, the leadership have their offices right in the production offices with our uh, team and uh, uh, really function as, uh, as a one team. So uh, overall, but, but the piece that, that, that uh, we get also is, is their knowledge and expertise and in uh, predictive and preventative maintenance that they, they brought in day one and then also the vast majority of Valmet expertise worldwide that we can tap in uh, fairly easily uh, day in, day out. Now, in your presentation this morning, you talked about uh, the uh, production team approach or the shift team approach, and uh, and tell me how that how that works in, in in practice. So, in practice, the way it works is that the the shift teams run our business, mm -hmm. and the rest of us support them to be successful for the twelve hours that they're in the mill. We have one shift team leader that uh, leads the teams and and really coordinates uh, activities, who's doing which job, and that really is the coach of the game plan. Uh, uh, what, what the rest of our management team are what we would call subject matter experts and specific support or service parts of our, our business, and they interface with the uh, crews uh, to make sure that they understand how to do something, not necessarily the teamwork approach. The shift team leaders make sure training-wise, uh, um, uh, the game plan is executed and reported on effectively, and uh, and uh, and uh, and identify when resources are needed uh, when when the, when they when they do get into the ditch and they need some help to get out. And I guess most of the employees were uh, were perhaps unfamiliar with with paper making. And uh, how did you manage the training of uh, that? And when did you start training actually? 
That's a great question. We uh, we hired um, almost everybody green to the paper industry on the uh, production technician side, uh, our workers, and on the maintenance side. There's a lot that are that were green uh, to the uh, industry. We we brought folks in uh, six months, seven months before startup, and uh, we put them through uh, rigorous uh, classroom training. Uh, and time to, for March to be, uh, so 1st of uh, January 2013, we brought them into the classroom. By March, we had them in the mill doing line labeling and doing commissioning and doing lockout tagouts to learn the process. And then uh, we're, we're instrumental in the startup. Very good. Thank you for your time. Thank you.